Planet Vero Studio is powered by the Nolan Group of Remax Associated Realty. MyNextHomeFinder.com It's time now for Mental Health Matters with your host, Lisa Reimer. Mental Health Matters is graciously underwritten by New Vision Eye Center, world-class eye care on the Treasure Coast. New Horizons thanks Dr. Paul Minotti, Dr. Stephen Tate, Dr. Robert Reinauer, and Dr. David O'Brien. Now, here's Lisa Reimer. Mental health does matter. Yes, being in good headspace matters. Mental health issues can affect your thinking, your decision-making, your behavior, and even your physical health. Hi, I'm Lisa Reimer, and I'm the host of Mental Health Matters and a communications officer for New Horizons of the Treasure Coast in Okeechobee. We are the largest mental health and addiction recovery provider in a four-county region. We serve 15,000 children and adults annually, ages five and up, regardless of their ability to pay. In fact, 67% of our clients since COVID have lost their ability to uh, have income or have any insurance, and yet no one is turned away due to lack of financial resources. So if you'd like to hear about the wide range of services that we provide, both outpatient and inpatient, you can go online to www.nhtcinc.org. That's New Horizons Treasure Coast, Inc.org. And check us out. Um, we have uh, um, outpatient facilities across uh, Indian River, St. Lucie, Martin, and Okeechobee counties. And our main campus is on Midway Road in Fort Pierce. So today's mental health matter is nutrition. And here to talk about that is Veronica Kolabab, who was the keynote speaker at our fashion show a couple of years ago. And she's also an certified integrative nutrition health coach and the Director of Business Development at Nice Roofing and Construction. Thanks for being here. Thank you so much for having me here. I appreciate that. I also in the studio is my very trusty co-host, Ms. Katie Love, Hi. who will be talking to us throughout the show, as well as bringing us Teenage Confidential later on in the segment. So, um, so first of all, what is integrative uh, health? Okay. Um, or nutrition, I know it. Yeah. yeah. Well, integrate. when people think of nutrition, they automatically think of food on our plate. And the food on our plate is only a portion of our total health. So, and you know this with mental health, we need to have a um, spiritual connection, like something higher than ourselves. We need a good home environment. We need a good work environment. So integrative nu nutrition incorporates all of this, the spirituality, the home aspect, relationships, because relationships are key to our health. So let's just say you have the best diet on the planet and you love your job, but you're in an abusive relationship at home, your health will decline. Like what you put in is what comes out. It really matters what you put in your mind, Everything. your mouth, Everything. your heart. Yes, mm -hmm. that what we consume. So I tell people, people are like, why are you so positive all the time? <laughs> well, I don't watch TV. I don't listen to any music that isn't uplifting or inspiring. I don't read things that are negative or violent or anything like that. I'm very cautious of what I consume because I wasn't always that way and I wasn't always healthy either. So I feel like it's very important whatever I put into my body from the food that I eat to what I'm watching, to what I'm listening to, to what I'm reading, to exercise, that's all part of health, which is integrative nutrition. So you actually did take nutrition classes Oh, yeah. To become a nutrition coach. Oh, yeah. So um, so what kind of nutrition classes? I see, you know, you online doing all kinds of cooking <laughs> and there's no gluten and there's no sugar. So tell us a little bit about that. Sure. Well, I actually graduated from the Institute of Integrative Nutrition out of New York. All of their classes are online, but they're not like a one week course. This was like a full year of brain beating information packing education and um, we learned from amazing uh, professionals uh, holistic doctors integrative uh, mds functional medicine doctors those were all of our teachers including other health coaches and people like um, the creator of primal uh, supplements and i mean just all different um, lecturers that were just 
incredible. And we had to do exams, four exams in the year. So it was very comprehensive education. And um, so as far as the cooking goes, I've had to be gluten and dairy free for over a decade now. Oh. And so I had to learn how to eat a certain way from a long time ago. And then what happened was I got really ill from not taking care of myself, being in a bad relationship, drinking too much, you know, doing things like that and working too much. And so I got what they call candida and it was in my stomach, but it wasn't an Albicans candida, which is a mild candida. It was, it's when the microbiome overgrows the yeast in the stomach and then it goes through the body and it's a debilitating illness. So at that point I wanted to heal it naturally. So I chose not to take Diflucan or any antifungal medications, but it took me a year of an extremely strict, like candida diet is the strictest diet on the planet. Mm -hmm. I went from 128 pounds to 110 that year. And I am five, I was five, five, six and a half about. So I was like a skeleton and, but I did, I healed it naturally. But I mean, everything came off the plate. No sugar of any kind. That means no peas, no carrots, no corn, no fruit, none of it. Uh, No citric acid, which we know is in everything. No caffeine, no gluten, no dairy. No, 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 no. The list is so long, no caffeine, no alcohol, nothing. What did you eat? <laughs> Protein and vegetables, which is what we should all eat anyway. <laughs> so, but you know, I, I've loved putting the fruit back in. I did miss the fruit a lot, but I was able to heal that naturally. And so I learned, I had to learn quickly how to eat differently, like in a blink. Why did you have to do stop dairy and gluten years ago? Well, gluten, um, they've really molested the wheat over the years and we're seeing a lot more people with ailments that turn up um, they can't diagnose them and once they take the gluten out of the diet so these protein binders affect the body in many different ways and mentally too so in gluten is also a binder called gliadin and that protein and dr william davis talks about this a lot that protein actually mimics a brain protein a healthy brain protein and so when we take in the gluten which has the gliadin Um, the immune system attacks, but it not only attacks the gliadin, it attacks the healthy brain protein that looks just like the gliadin. So that's why we see a lot of mental illness, ADD, ADHD, which we didn't see many, many years ago when I was younger. Um, we, uh, it's, we see Alzheimer's, you know, how many people with Alzheimer's and dementia, depressions and anxieties. A lot of times when they take the gluten out of their diet, those things kind of clear up. Mm. That is so interesting. Um, And so you don't even really have to have a gluten sensitivity Mm. to have some of those effects that maybe you don't even know. Right. And sometimes related. Well, gluten intolerance doesn't just show up in the stomach. It can show up in memory loss. It can show up in pain in your joints. It can show up a lot of different ways in the body. Anger problems, mental problems, and they don't realize that it's from that. So people, a lot of people have gluten problem. They don't realize they have a gluten problem. Is it because, like you said, we have, you know, messed with the the, the wheat product. Well, what if you have a very organic wheat? Would you have the same reaction that to well-made bread, artisanal, you know, bread made, you know, by In hand? another country, and, maybe. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> See, our country, unfortunately, um, as much as I love America, Uh, We allow a lot of things in our food that other countries do not. So a lot of big food uh, products are and their ingredients are actually banned from Europe and other countries that they can use here in America. I actually posted something like that on my Facebook, a link to that so people can read that. Uh, Because a lot of these processed foods, not only do they have the glutens and the junk and the garbage and the fillers and the, um, you know, this gum and that, you know, starch, but they also have tons of sugar, which also is a brain burner. You know, sugar is really not good for the mind. It's very addictive. It's horrible for the body. The liver can't process excess amounts of sugar. So it puts it out into the body as fat. So everybody's got these high triglycerides. And, you know, that's not coming from the fat, like avocados and nuts and all these wonderful things. It's coming from the sugar. Converting. Yeah, I mean, at, at looking at nonprofits that serve... Um, low income or high risk populations such as the food bank and um, the source and um, you know other organizations more and more we are seeing fresh produce fresh vegetables and fruits um, being introduced whereas you know it's it can be very difficult for an organization 
to take all of that on because you have to wash it, you have to prep it, you have to, you know, um, the kitchens, the soup kitchens or, or whomever is going to receive the foods, they have to be prepared to process, you know, just, just process fresh vegetables and fruits. Um, but it's important, you know, just they talk about uh, food deserts in low income neighborhoods where it's not maybe, you know, profitable to bring a Publix grocery store. So you have these convenience stores and you have mostly uh, sugar laden and, and fat laden processed foods. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So and it's not good. No, if it's not brain food. Oh, no. Children, you know, don't perform well. I'm always surprised when I hear that. You know, the, the free lunch or the free breakfast before school is a Pop-Tart. It's like, whoa, that's what? That's not food. There's <laughs> nothing about that that's probably ever been alive. <laughs> I say eat real food. You know, people go, well, Veronica, what do I eat? Eat real food. I mean, what would you do if all these boxes of junk weren't on the shelf? You'd so you're just food. saying when you say real food, what do you mean? Real food like vegetables and um proteins and like fruits. one word foods yeah like eat chicken food or exactly celery pear, <laughs> pear <laughs> potato something right. real food right. not gross. two words or three words alive right <laughs> oh gratin potatoes <laughs> which i love <laughs> i know and here we are going into you know the the time of the year when you know you eat all that kind of yummy stuff but oh, and the cheese i mean cheese is actually a drug in itself it is mine. <laughs> it's a drug in general uh -huh. because cheese has casomorphins, right? So um, one of the funny things from school, this health, another health coach was teaching on, and I just laughed so hard and I saved a little section of it. He was talking about, you know, you have the deer and the deer, the, you know, when it's nursing from the mother, it's protective. So the deer stays close to the mother because it has to eat. So it allows her to protect the baby and it until it grows up or a child is crying. You feed them. They go to sleep like it, it really knocks them out because there's actually case of morphins in that. So they've taken cheese and they suck all of the water out it out of it. And now you have a block of drug. And so people see cheese on TV they're like, oh, I have to have some cheese. You know, it's very true. Like cheese is very addictive, too. <laughs> so food can be very addictive depending upon the kind of food it is. Okay, so we're going to take a short break. We're going yeah. to come back from hearing our sponsors and we're going to hear how food, though, can go to the, the opposite ends if you're overly, I think, focused on, on food and what you're eating. Okay. Yeah. Dr. Robert Reinauer of New Vision Eye Center is a fellowship-trained retina surgeon. He provides the very best care for patients needing treatment for dry and wet macular degeneration and diabetic eye care, as well as surgical care of the retina, including retinal detachments and the removal of floaters. Providing world-class eye care on the Treasure Coast. Call 772-257-8700 or visit newvisioneyecenter.com. Have you shopped at the Habitat Restore lately? This is one place that everyone must visit. It's become a regular weekly stop for many who love the thrill of discovering all the newly arriving merchandise. we become popular because of the generosity of so many Indian River County residents and businesses that donate goods. To start with, we have a deconstruction crew that removes building materials for the purpose of reuse. Through resale, the Restore continues to support the Habitat goal of serving families in our county. Of course, there there's more to see. The ReStore's massive showroom displays furniture for every room, all in great condition. Shoppers will love the layout, which separates departments including plumbing, home accessories, electronics, lawn and garden, tools, sporting goods, seasonal goods, and more. The Indian River County Habitat ReStore is at 4580 North U.S. Highway 1, just north of 45th Street. Tax-deductible donations can be dropped off or will come and pick them up for free online at irchabitat.org. Are you feeling blue? Going for a walk outside will surely lift your spirits. Studies indicate that walkers scored significantly higher on vitality, enthusiasm, pleasure, and self-esteem, and lower on tension, depression, and fatigue after they walked outside. Feeling down once in a while is normal, but if you're feeling depressed on a regular basis, you may want to consult a mental health professional. New Horizons is the largest mental health and substance abuse agency in the area, with help just a phone call away 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Call 772-468-5600 or visit newhorizonstreasurecoastinc.org. 
Welcome back to Mental Health Matters. If you're just joining us, I'm in the studio with Ms. Katie Love, my co-host, and Veronica Kolabab, who is a certified integrative nutrition health coach, and she's the director of business development for Nice Roofing and Construction. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Um, If you're just now um, listening to the interview, you can listen to the first half of this part one of a two-part interview on our Facebook page. Um, We have all of our interviews there posted, and that's New Horizons Mental Health. Maybe it's just New Horizons of the Treasure Coast. But um, So we've been talking about uh, what integrative nutrition is, and you've talked about some of your... Um, physical ailments that you had to address through nutrition and there seems to be a lot of focus on like gluten-free and sugar-free and dairy-free and uh, you know I have to say you know when I get too focused on restrictive I can't stop thinking about food all the time because it's like okay you can't have that that's what I want and I'm always hungry and, 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 and I end up like, I mean, one time I went on a, a raw food diet and I gained eight pounds in a week, Wow! you know, because like I just kept eating peaches with olive oil poured on it because that's what they said. If you're going to eat, you know, sugar, you have to slow down the glycemic with olive oil. And, you know, that's not good either. Like no. that, that hyper focus on food or to, you know, to gain a lot of weight in a short amount of time. Mm-hmm. And I think about Katie, you know, in high school, um, you know, when I was, even when I was younger, you know, the girls, they would have, you know, eating disorders or anorexia and bulimia and all that stuff. That's still around, isn't it? Oh, 100%. You you see it a lot, especially in the more the female spectrum of it. Um, like I said, sometimes I'll see people only eat like an apple at lunch to be able to keep a figure. And it's it's really sad because they're so focused on conforming to this this norm that they have to be skiddy to be conventionally beautiful. And that's not true. Like, and we've all learned over time that it's not true, but it's just a mindset that we still haven't broken. And it, it's just, it's really upsetting to see. Do, do the teachers, are they aware? Do people keep an eye out for kids and the signs, you know, going to the bathroom after you, you know, yeah, have your lunch or, you know, that kind of stuff. Right. Um, I, I don't think they do necessarily. And not because they don't care or anything, just because I don't think that's really on the forefront of their mind because um eating disorders aren't really talked about a lot in school it's you know strictly more academic and we don't touch a lot on mental health we had a mental health day last friday actually but that was a lot of your your mental you know depression anxiety staying away from drugs it wasn't talking about some of that deeper stuff that i think they were worried would trigger some people but i think it's a really important conversation that needs to be had yeah you know um, it from my experience and seeing and talking to other women, the the bridge is when the focus comes off of the body or the weight, and it becomes about health. And mm-hmm. so the food is about living healthy, a lifestyle, becoming healthy. That's exactly what it is. Mm-hmm. It's a lifestyle because that what I do is not a fad. You know, like people go on gluten free diets as a fad or any of these other keto diet and something that you mentioned earlier, like what you gained weight on the raw, raw food diet. Yeah. <laughs> so the funny part is, and, and the reality of it is, is that not any one diet works for everybody. Everybody's body is so incredibly different, which is another principle of integrative nutrition. No one thing works for everyone. So one man's food is another man's poison. You know, like how some people are allergic to shellfish and could die, right? I love shellfish. Some people can eat gluten and maybe not have a problem and other people do not, you know, so everybody's body is so completely different. And to the body issue, I, you know, the media is not our friend because they portray these women that are not real on TV all the time. They've photoshopped and done this and that. And yes, there's lots of beautiful women and beauty comes in all different sizes and healthy doesn't mean skinny. Healthy means healthy. So you talked um, about not being healthy before. Mm-hmm. And I mean, I heard your uh, keynote speech, you know, at our fashion show. Mm-hmm. Um, and so let's go back okay. to some of the things that contributed to your unhealthiness. Sure. Yeah. I mean, starting life, life was really difficult, you know, and as a child, we grew up in very abusive home. 
Um, my father had mental illness and he was an alcoholic at, um, and he, he was really abusive to our mother. And so we, that we grew up in that, which became normal, right? So we don't think any, everybody's house is like that, right? Until you get out of it and see that it's really not that way. And at 14, my dad committed suicide, which you know. And so um, that affects a lot of things. So growing up abusive affects your mind, right? You're never good enough. You're never worthy. You're never pretty enough. Like I went through my entire life thinking, well, my entire younger life into my almost 30, late mid 30s, thinking that I wasn't even pretty, right? Everyone else was prettier than me. And, you know, I just wasn't worthy of this and that. And I drew into my life the, the way my mind worked, right? So I would draw in the narcissist boyfriend, you know, or the relationship that was aloof and, you know, distant um, careers that were not really for me. You know what I mean? Jobs that took advantage, people that took advantage. So that's really, I mean, it, the the things that happen in our life affect us that way, mm-hmm. but continue on and contribute to that health issue. So having drinks, and I'm not an alcoholic, but I, when I was with someone who drank a lot, I would drink with them, right? And so, or, or work too much. I felt I had to work harder to be better, to be better because I wasn't good enough. Mm-hmm. And so all of those things contribute to our health as well. You know, we talk a lot about um, the adverse childhood experiences here uh, on the show. And, you know, you just named so many of them, you know, the the sexual abuse, the mental abuse, the, the uh, physical abuse, the insecurity about food and shelter and the, you know, growing up in a divorced house, growing up in, with someone, you know, uh, committing suicide with mental illness, with uh, addiction issues or, and even divorce. OK, so some of these, you know, we all have one, two. But when you start having more and more, you know, you describe and as we open the show, every single time we talk about mental health issues can even impact your physical health. Right. Oh, definitely. So you just described exactly that. We only have a couple more minutes for this segment. We're going to going to continue with you in the next uh, uh, show. So this is a two part show. Well, talking about that real quick, mm-hmm. though. Yes. When we talk about a scores, you know, the mm-hmm. the amount of traumas in yes. your life. And we did that in school as well. And my A score was like ridiculous. So I said, you know what? Everything in my life has to be about health now. And I think once people claim that, they take their body, their health, because that's our greatest wealth. So when we choose that, whatever it is, whether it's a great relationship, exercising, eating the right foods, doing what you need to do, but taking yourself and making yourself number one, mm-hmm. because we can't help anyone else unless we're right all, all the way. You know... And one of the reasons why I wanted you to come on the show and talk about this was that I, from the readings that I've done, um, understand that we hold trauma in our body. So it's not just working through it mentally. Um, It's not just going to therapy. And then there's the other part of the work, which is through the body. And whether that is, you know, through massage, uh, to to work it out of the tissues or exercise to sweat it out of your body or through uh, nutritional health, um, yes, I think or food health or spiritual right? practices and spiritual Reiki practices, and right? Energy healing and all those great things. Yeah, so it's it's an integrative approach to healing, yeah, to wellness. Yeah, how exciting! It's one I'm in love with it. I understand. <laughs> Anyone who knows me knows I'm in love with it. <laughs> well, in the second uh, interview that we'll do, um, I want to talk about what a coach actually does. Okay. And uh, and then we're going to talk to Miss Katie again um, about about what goes on in the teenage world with food and self image and and how maybe some of these things can be applied to them. Sure. Okay. How can people get a hold of you? Uh, right now, my website's being built, so it's on the Facebook page. I have Eating with V Facebook page, and the website will be eatingwithv.com. And we'll talk about your television show uh, coming up on the next segment. Too. Okay, thank thanks you. for so much for being here. Thank you. And Miss Katie, thank you. <laughs> be good to yourself. That's what this message is today. Thanks for joining us.